What's up my trusty snow tracks viewers? Luke here bringing you guys another walk around of a 2024 model. In this case, it is the Polaris XCR650. And I'm gonna come right out off the top and say it, this sled is unchanged from last season. And I'm actually pretty glad about that. There really isn't anything that Polaris needed to do to the XCR650. And I would worry if they did change anything that they would actually take away from it because this is one absolutely fantastic snowmobile front to back. Um, obviously there's a new color scheme, um, love it or hate it. If you like the, I guess the aqua color, I don't know what you call this, Players probably has some crazy name for it, I don't know what that is. Um, if you love it, if you don't, whatever, there's multiple color schemes so you can get it different if you want. But what I really wanna focus in on is what I think are three of the most important aspects of a snowmobile. Now, you, your ideas might differ from this, but these are mine. I think that the three things that make for a good riding experience on a snowmobile are handling, ride quality, and ergonomic comfort. I think there's a lot of other factors that you wanna consider when you buy a sled, and there's a lot of other things that you wanna think about, and things that might be more important to you. But in my opinion, if you have excellent handling, really good ride quality, and really comfortable ergonomics, you've got a sled that people are gonna to wanna to come back to time after time. So with all that said, let's take a look at what this XCR is all about. Obviously, you've got Polaris's race IFS up front, and that is the secret to how great this sled handles. Um, front end shocks are walker velocity, needle shocks, they're called the high-low, meaning they have high and low speed compression adjustability. Um, they are great shocks. I don't know why Walker gets a bad rap in the industry. We've had never had a single problem with any of our Walker Evans shocks. They've always performed flawlessly, and I really like them. I think these ones work good. Um, I will say that on an XCR, I think it would have been beneficial to have rebound damping adjustability. These ones don't, uh, but that's a small point and most people don't know how to use rebound anyway, so maybe it's better that way. Um, you've obviously got the Matrix chassis. That's, what, that's a given now with Polaris. Pretty much everything they sell is on the Matrix chassis for the most part, and we love the Matrix. The Matrix works great. Um, there's really almost nothing bad you can say about it. Out back, you've got a Pro CC skid frame. Pretty standard stuff. This is the XCR version of the Pro CC, which means it has all kinds of like stiffening bits and pieces, and it's got different four wheel rear axle. Um, now this is something I talk about in my test ride, but um, this is a 128, and that still confuses some people for some reason. Um, they're not sure why it is that, but it's really quite a simple answer. This track is a 0.252 pitch track. It has a different driver. Um, the, the drive axle is a different size, which allows for that 2.25 pitch track. And, it, and the mathematical results of it all is that it ends up being 128 inches long. It's not because 128 is better. It's not because 129 is worse. It just ends up that way mathematically. So don't get caught up in the 128. Um, I like that Polaris has matched the color of the spindles, which is a very kind of almost translucent candy color with the, uh, the slide rails and the skid frame here. Um, it just looks really good. It carries the color all the way through. Again, maybe you hate that color. I can't control that. I think it looks pretty neat and pretty good. And I think if you had gear that had a little bit of that in it, it would look awesome. Um, something I'm noticing as I'm back here is uh, all Polaris sleds now come with a 12 volt outlet for charging. Um, so you can add your battery tender easily and it's right down here with a rubber cap on it. That's nice that Polaris has done that. You've got LED lighting all the way around. Excellent running boards. The running boards have big wide openings. They, they clear snow really, really well. They're incredibly grippy. These are some of the most grippy running boards in the industry and I've never slipped off them. So that's a good thing. Cockpit wise though, um, this sled has got some kind of cool parts on it that your average VR1 doesn't. It has pro taper handlebars, has a little bit lower um, bar riser than a VR1. The VR1 is just slightly taller. Uh, it comes with the hand guards, and these are different hand guards than what Polaris has used before. The mounts for them are really sturdy. They're really stylish. I think they look really good. Whether or not they'd be durable in, an, in a rollover or something, that remains to be seen, but I think they look really, really good. Um, you have a magnetic tether, so that's something that uh, you don't get on all VR1s. Only the XCRs come with the magnetic tether, so that's something to think about. And of course, when you look up here, you have your 7S display. Um, an industry favorite, it works great. It is an option, you don't have to get the 7S on, on this sled. You can get this with just the regular message center gauge if you choose to. I think you're crazy if you don't uh, get the 7S because it offers so much usability, so many features that are just so good. And at the end of the day, even if you don't want to use the features, you still get a gauge that's bigger and has easier to read numbers and gives you a lot more information about your sled that is useful for day-to-day -day riding. Even if you don't care about GPS mapping and ride tracking and all that kind of stuff, you still get an easier to use gauge that gives you a ton of information that the message center doesn't give as clearly. 
Um, it also makes things like using your smart warmers, which is something else that this sled has, so much easier. You can adjust them right from the gauge. It requires almost no um, menus or anything that's right there. It's super simple and straightforward, and I really like that. Of course, your kill button throttle, that's all standard player stuff. The switch gear's been around for a few years. It works good. It, it's nothing flashy about it. It's fine. Uh, I have no complaints, but I also have no overt praise for it. It just is a really good setup. And of course, you got Polaris's brakes. Um, now, I know that I got in trouble last year online because I said Polaris's have great brakes, and I don't care because Polaris's do have great brakes, <laughs> and these are great brakes. Uh, after spending a lot of time on this sled, these are the best brakes in the industry. Um, AJ and I agree. We've done multiple stories on multiple 600 class sleds and you just can't get away from the fact that when you want to stop the polaris brake is has the best feel has the most modulation the best power it's just an excellent brake it is also in its class right now the only sled that still has a jack shaft brake and not a drive axle brake and i think that's really interesting um, there is something that's lost when you put the brake down on the drive axle versus having it on the jack shaft there is something there some level of feel, level of modulation that you just lose. And you know, this works good. I hope Polaris never changes it. Um, of course you've got, as I mentioned, uh, you've got your storage thing under here, which is great. It's big enough for goggles. Um, you can put your baseball cap in there without it getting crunched, which is nice. Um, you can put all kinds of stuff in here. It's ex excellent. This is an excellent storage container and Polaris does a great job with that. And it's really thoughtful of them to include it. Now, what you're going to notice though, that there's no windshield on this sled. And when you order a Polaris new, you can only snow check an XCR. You can't buy one in season. So when you snow check, you automatically pretty much have to choose which windshield you want. Obviously uh, our test unit came without one. And uh, if you choose that, you're crazy because this is not a very good setup. This is cold. Um, I don't like this at all. I would put at least the mid-height on there or, or probably maximum the mid-height. The mid-height windshield from Polaris works excellent and that's the one I'd be putting on here for sure. So just a thought, um, just because it maybe looks cool, does not make it functional and is not worth it. Um, the panels on this sled come off really easy. They're three quarter turn fasteners. That was one thing Polaris updated this season was they used a different type of plastic or durometer of plastic or rubber in the quarter turns. So these things here. Um, that makes them easier to turn and manipulate, especially in cold weather. Now they're still extremely stiff, um, but they are easier. The old ones, you might have to use two hands sometimes or friggin' use a wrench in some cases because they were so hard to get twisted. These ones are much easier. And of course the hood still comes off with two Zeus fasteners, pops right off and you can get to your engine and compartment and everything else underneath there. So that's excellent. As I said before, this sled hasn't really changed. Um, it's the same as last season, so there's not a ton more to talk about. Uh, it is probably one of the most aggressive, playful sleds that you can get that still makes for an absolutely excellent, no compromise trail sled. If you wanna crank up your shocks on this sled, you can go hit jumps and you can go hit bumps full speed and it'll take it. Uh, Levi Lavalley is a great example of that. I mean, he rides an XCR and he pushes it as hard as he wants through the bumps and it takes everything he can throw at it and never gives up. But if you're more a kind of rider who just wants the XCR because it says XCR, you can turn the shocks way down, soften them right up, and this thing will ride every bit as good as any VR1. In some cases, I might argue it actually will ride better because you do have high and low speed compression adjustability on the shocks. So that's something to think about. Of course, the Polaris has electric start. Pretty much every Polaris comes with electric start now. It's, it's the number one feature. Everyone checks that box. You're crazy if you don't. But unlike some of its competition, the Polaris still has a pull cord. So, you know, are we going the way of getting rid of pull cords on everything? I sincerely hope not. Polaris hasn't, and I think that's great. Um, again, not much else to talk about. This is just an all-around really good sled. I like it. Everyone who rides it really likes it. Actually, everyone who rides it loves it. Um, year after year, even without any changes, it's still a favorite amongst everybody in our crew. Uh, 650, 850, doesn't matter. We all love the XCRs. They provide just a little bit of something that you can't get anywhere else, and uh, yeah. So that's all I got to say about that. If you guys appreciated this, it's shorter than normal. Um, usually I go on for about 20 minutes. In this case, it's a little bit shorter than that. Um, but if you like this walk around, make sure you click that like button. Um, if you like this style of video or walk around videos, make sure you, you subscribe to our channel because we have tons of stuff coming up all the time. A lot of walk arounds coming up. And uh, you know, if you don't want to miss one, if you want to get notified right away, make sure you turn the bell on so that you're notified immediately as we upload new content. And there will be lots of new content coming pretty steady. So with all of that said, Thank you for watching this walk around. I'm going to end with starting the sled so you can hear it run because if I don't, you'll be mad at me.